My name is Rick Kitson. I'm the Public and Environmental Affairs Director for the City of Cupertino. Thanks for coming out. And let's get things started by introducing our Mayor, Mark Santoro. Do we want that over there? No, you can't hear me, right? Um, so first, I want to thank you all for coming and a little bit of explanation about what this is about. So over the years, a lot of times I have had people come to me and say, you know, I have a small business and, you know, we could use some help. And it's like, well, what kind of help could you use? Well, and people have different ideas. And so throughout time, uh, both the city and the, and the uh, Chamber of Commerce have tried to, to help small businesses, but it's unclear if we're always doing the best possible thing. So the purpose of this workshop is really to put all of you guys to work but you know, we've, we've kind of hidden that in the second half so you think you're getting a, a you know, donut or something as well. So the, we're gonna break this meeting into two parts. The first half is gonna be um, to provide some information. So just in case you're not happy with the second part, maybe you got something out of the first part that, that uh, you found useful. So the first half of the meeting is gonna be uh, informational to try to give you some information about um, general things that hopefully can help a small business. And then the second half of the meeting is going to be broken into um, smaller groups, discussion groups. What we're going to do is look into um, things that, that can be suggested by all of you that either the chamber and or the city can use to help you be more successful. Um, I should say in the back of the room, there's a form that looks kind of like this. If at any time uh, one of the speakers is doing something and there's a particular thing you'd like to know or some information you'd like to have, if you go in the back and, and fill it out, it's, it's mostly set up, it says, for uh, community development or, or planning, as we also, uh, planning's part of, part of community development. But if you have other questions, if you put them on the form, we'll try to get them to the right person and get you some answers. <clears throat> so um, it turns out there's a lot of people in this room uh, have asked me already about who would I go to to do this or who do I go to to do that. So we, we sort of have it a little bit different on the schedule. We're going to do something a little bit different. First, we're going to run and do introductions. And I know a lot of you are here um, specifically for your small business. And when you introduce yourselves, let us know your name and your small business and kind of what you do. Um, and then a lot of the people are here to help, and they will also introduce themselves. We actually have um, quite a few people in the room that, that, that can be useful to you. We have um, uh, another council member here, uh, Rod Sinks, and Council Member Gilbert Wong will be showing up later. Um, we have the President of the Chamber of Commerce here, who's going to introduce himself in a minute. Um, and so I'm going to ask all the people that also helped to introduce themselves so that people know you're the one to go to to, to get some help. And, and finally, um, for those of you that are here for your own small business, if there's something in particular you'd like to get out of this meeting, you have a particular problem or a question or something you'd like to be addressed, if you'll go ahead and let us know that. Erin, um, who's over there, she, she's, we have two whiteboards. She's very tricky at stereo whiteboards. Some parts of this are going to seem a little formal, but um, by the end of the day, if there's something you wanted to ask or get a question or get something forward, uh, make sure that that, that happened. Uh, there is another opportunity here, which most of you have picked up on. Uh, there, there's certainly networking possibilities. There are people from the chamber and the city that, that, can, that you can line up with to ask some questions and help you. But there's also other business owners here, which I found through my own experience are a far better um, source of information for starting a small business. Somebody who's been through it before, for those of you a little newer, um, certainly can be a, a, a wealth of uh, advice for you and help, um, especially if their business is anywhere close to related to yours. So with that, um, I guess I will reintroduce um, Rick Kitson, who's gonna take us to the next step in the program. And thank you all for coming. Great. Thank you, Mayor Santoro. When the mayor originally uh, conceived of this uh, last fall uh, in preparation for his, his State of the City, we started doing a little background work. And we've known for, for quite some time that we had, uh, there's one big company in town now. You may know of them. Um, they want to big, build a big round headquarters. And that's, for the most part, what people talk about when they, or think about when they think about business in Cupertino. Uh, but for the Mayor's State of the City speech, we put together all the business licenses, uh, somewhere over 3,000. And the vast majority of those were, in fact, small businesses like those of us here today. 
So with that in mind, this, uh, and to reiterate what the mayor had said, this is a very simple format. The first half, we're just going to be giving you a little taste of what you may not know about, but what is available. Very simple, very compact. We're not going to try to answer all your questions during the presentation. If, if there's a particular area that you're interested in, please follow up with the presenters or follow up with us, and we'll connect you to the right people. Uh, a break for lunch, very brief break. And then the second half, it's what you need and we don't know about. So the second half is you telling us what you would really like to have. Uh, and maybe isn't already available. And so we know what we do. We don't necessarily know what you need. And I think that was the, really the, the essential part that we need to close the loop. So if there's a question you have to ask, please ask it. Chances are there's a lot of people, if not in this room, certainly in the community, that have the same question. So with that in mind, if I could get the presenters to come up to the front of the room. Uh, we have, uh, we're going to hear presentations from uh, community Development, Gary Chow, our City Planner, Aaron, our S Sustainability Manager, uh, Captain Kenneth Bender, which he's very modest, what do you call yourself, a captain, he is our police chief. So he is a captain, that's true, he didn't lie, but he is our police chief, so uh, Captain Bender. Uh, Chamber of Commerce, John Zarelli. And he, and I think just you, John, or is, are you also coming up? Okay. And then Pat Richards. Is Pat here? Oh, thank you, Pat. Great. So we're going to do 10 minutes each. Just bam, 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 give you a taste. If there's more you need to know, please follow up with the presenters. Okay? And so um, I'll try to give you a warning. I'll be in the back waving fingers, and that's a joke someplace there, but we're not going to go there. But uh, so 10 minutes, we'll just cut you off, okay? And that knowing that there's far too much information for us to share, it's just to let people know what services are available, right? So Gary, why don't you start? I'll be really quick, five minutes. Um, so community development, my name is Gary Chow. I'm the city planner again with the um, Cupertino. Um, I work under um, the community development director and under community development, we have housing services, planning department and building department. So um, I'm gonna be speaking to you a little bit more about planning. For planning department, this is basically where, I would say where everybody would start. Um, if you are a business owner or if you have an idea or if you want to do um, some projects uh, with your current existing physical um, building or space, I would say uh, it is highly recommended that you come down to visit us so that we can give you some advice, put you in touch with the right people so you can be on the right path um, before you solidify your plans. So, you know, things that we help people on, uh, as in particular business owners, are like things like signs, if you have um, tenant improvement plans, or if you are thinking about your, your use and looking at other physical spaces and whether if you, you know, want to uh, um, uh, intensify your use or grow your business, come talk to us because um, you may not think of it initially, but there's actually a lot of things that are in play that are regulated by the city um, that would be uh, vital in terms of your uh, consideration planning process in order for your process to be smooth. Things like parking, um, the use of the, the, the shopping center or the zone, um, and also just sort of general design review. Um, and we also can put you in touch with the right people within the city uh, departments, like building department, fire department, so that you can uh, plan your physical space and, and meet your needs. Um, we also uh, do some code enforcement. Um, we interface with community members and stakeholders, like being in this, uh, this setting today and talking to you nice folks. We also interface with the state agencies. There's actually a lot of mandates and regulations and policies that come down from the state and the region um, that governs uh, development, development process and uh, direction of where the state would like us to be. 
um, a lot of the times we, we have to converse with our community members and stakeholders, make sure that our comments and, and input are addressed and so we can discuss and um, review with the state agency to make sure that the rules that the state are mandating is gonna interface well with our businesses and our citizens. Um, uh, the, the, another thing that I wanna mention is we have what I call the one-stop shop counter um, that's located in City Hall in the basement, um, where uh, the hours of the, the counter is open from 7.30 to 5.30, Monday through Thursday. We're open during lunch, as well as uh, Friday, 7.30 over, over to, through lunch, and as well as uh, ends at 4.30 on Fridays. So basically, um, if you don't know, sometimes business owners, they don't, or, or citizens or people that are interested in doing business in town, they don't really know where to start. I would say that's a great place to start. Um, we will welcome any of you or any of uh, people that are doing business in town to come down, visit us, um, and we'll help you kind of channel you to the right direction. You can talk to Public Works, you can talk to Building Department, you can talk to Planning Department, uh, all within the same uh, environment. Um, so, and then some of the other uh, resources that we have, we have a website. Uh, if you go to cupertino.org uh, backslash planning, um, we have a lot of our regulations, our forms, um, guidelines on the, on the web, as well as we, uh, we can uh, make appointments. You can make appointments with us. We'll be happy sometimes to even go out to your, your location to discuss ideas or questions that you may have, again, about the physical development of spaces. So I'll just end at that. There's too many to cut, too much things to cover under planning. Um, again, I would encourage you to fill out the questionnaire if you have additional questions, or well, I'll be happy to answer any of your questions either during break or offline. So thank you very much. Great, thank you, Gary. Um. So we, as Gary in introduced, the city has a suite of services that are really oriented towards supporting the small to mid-sized business community. And we're really just giving you a teaser of those today. Um, a lot of also what we do is work on making sure we connect you with the right business resources that are offered through community partners. Um, so we're also introducing you to a variety of those today through whether it's the sheriff's office, the chamber, um, or also Nova. So we're really excited that we have those partners here today. Um, but I wanna start by by um, talking a little bit about what Gary introduced. Oh, great, thank you very much, Pete. Um, which is the planning department is, is really oriented towards you know, helping you maintain compliance and, and a million other things, of course. But uh, what we wanna do is also talk to you a little bit about a new service that the city's been offering for about a year um, that we're calling Green Biz Cupertino. So Green Biz is really here to work with businesses that are interested in conserving energy, conserving water, um, and ultimately cutting your utility costs out of that and also creating healthy work environments for your employees. And so um, I'm just going to give you a really quick run through, and our hope is that today it will entice you to want to take the next step and have one of our so associates that I introduced earlier today come out and speak with you directly about Green Biz. Um, we have free services that are offered to any interested party. So. For context, um, Green Biz Cupertino is actually kind of a subset of a larger program that was developed by the Association of Bay Area Governments in 1996. Um, the city itself, in realizing that this would be a really great tool to leverage in our own community, decided that we were going to put all of our buildings through the program. Uh, Cupertino really walks the talk when it comes to environmental services and environmental programs, and we wanted to lead by example by understanding the elements of the program before we started promoting it to the business community. So um, around two years ago, our city went through the entire process with our seven major facilities um, and were certified as of the end of last year. Um, and in going through that, we realized that it's a pretty robust process. Um, there's a lot of steps that are involved and a lot of tools that are available for you to leverage to help achieve the requirements of the program um, that many businesses aren't actually aware of. So there are free uh, consulting services that PG&E offers. The water 
water district will come out and do a free landscape audit. But um, in not having environmental expertise in your small business, which is not surprising, um, it's hard to figure out how to navigate all those resources. So our city decided that we wanted to create a program that would help businesses liaise with those resources um, and also work on going green through what are considered the best management practices in the state. Um, and so we launched Green Biz. Um, it says 2010, but from 2010 to 2011, we were really just piloting the program. And we were lucky enough to have Rio Adobe and Yamagami's Nursery as two of our initial pilot program members who helped us work out the kink. So now if you're interested in going through the program, we can offer a very streamlined process without any question that Janice can attest to, hopefully. Um, so what's the value of Green Biz? Um, we want to make sure, first and foremost, that you as a taxpayer in our community are receiving value from the city. Gary offered a series of different value adds that our planning and community development department offer, um, but we also have a series or a suite of environmental services that are available to you as a member of Cupertino, and we wanted to make sure that you could easily navigate them, find them, and access those services. The services that Sherry mentioned earlier is a great example. Um, you as a business are able to offer composting and single stream recycling, but a lot of our businesses don't know that exists. So we want to make sure that that information is available to you and that you're using all of the tools um, that are, are developed by the city. Um, we also want to make sure that you're aware of pending legislation that's occurring in our community. Regulatory requirements are getting more stringent over time. And so if we work together to help you understand what those requirements are and then go above that baseline um, to, again, create healthy working environments for your employees and really reduce your cost by hedging against the rising utility rates that we're experiencing in our, in our own businesses. So um, our energy rates are going up between 6 to 8% each year. Our water rates anywhere from 12 to 18%. So how do you hedge against that as a business member? Um, so we wanted to work on creating those support services and a series of other things. Um, so through Green Biz, we offer a series of different benefits from lowering your fixed costs um, to also creating a network of other businesses that have gone through this program. Uh, we want to make sure that you have access to some of the stories that the businesses have shared and some of the great environmental achievements that they've experienced in operating their own business in the city of Cupertino. And so we want to make sure that that network is really established and well available. Um, and we also want to make sure that that word is getting out to the public. So a lot of um, residents in our community and throughout the Bay Area are no longer just shopping with their pocketbooks. They're shopping with their core values and their mission. And so they're looking for businesses that have some type of green certification. They want to make sure that their dollars getting invested in something that they, they feel is a positive impact on our community and the environment. And so they're looking for some type of seal or distinguishing characteristic that shows you're going above and beyond. And green biz is a great way to do that. And I want to make sure Emmett has a couple of minutes. So Emmett Nelson is our sustainability specialist who's really helped grow our program. Um, since our two pilot partners, Emmett has engaged over 30 different businesses in this program. So many of are represented today. Um, and I hope Emmett can share some of their stories with us right now. Thank you, Emmett. Yeah, so as Aaron said, just here in this room today, we have three of the partners we've worked with. We have Art from Blue Light, who's going through the process. Vardy and Janice have already completed the process. They've seen savings um, pretty minuscule since they were doing large environmental things to begin with. We've had other businesses that have done things with lighting that I'll talk about in a little bit. But the main thing we want to highlight is that the services we offer really cover the full suite that we're looking for in the Green Business Program. We devote about 24 hours of our personal time to your business over about a four week period and we ask only between three to six hours of your own time. It's pretty simple. The biggest chunk is a two hour meeting where you sit down with us. We have a very friendly conversation about your business process. From there we go back and we start accessing all these all the, the parties we work with. So we bring John out from Ecology or the water service or, or even uh, PG&E and lighting retrofitters that come help you start saving money and better better work your business. Um, like I said, we work with all these partners that, that provide these free services, and since we work with them on a daily basis, we're able to streamline them, get them out there. We're actually on the high priority list for a lot of these businesses since we're doing the outreach for, for at least for pg and &E and for White Lights. They're happy to come out. We're giving them the data to help you guys move through, start saving money on, on your lighting retrofits. Um, the, the big thing that, that I really want to highlight is, are some case studies. So uh, we've worked with Vardy and Janice to go through the process. They had a few things to do to be certified, but really there are a lot of businesses that are doing lighting retrofits and seeing return on investment that is super short. 
We've worked with Sweet Passions Bakery. They did an $800 lighting retrofit that was rebated, where they only had to pay $50 of that rebate or of that of that service. So their return on their investment was three weeks. Now they're saving over $1,000 a year. That happens almost every week with us, whether through water audits with the uh, with the water district or through right lights and PG&E. Um, the driving machine as well. They have uh, they had a rebated lighting service of. Um, I believe they saved 85% of the total costs, and now they're saving $10,000 a year on their lighting. So these things happen every week, and we want to help you guys access these resources and start saving money. And then market your achievements. So once you're a green business, we start broadcasting your achievements to Cupertino and the Bay Area. Um, and I can answer questions offline as well. Thank you, guys. Thank you. I'm just the technical stand-in as well. So while we bring Captain Binder, is it Binder? Or Binder. Binder, sorry, up. So if you want to just do an introduction, I'll get your PowerPoint slide. Yeah. So um, if you could also let people know where your offices are. Yeah, it'll be good. It'll be good. Yeah. Good. And then uh, so executive summary, as Gary said, if you have a question, come in. We'll figure out who to connect you with. You don't need to know if it's the building department or environmental services, which is in public works or planning. If you come in, part of our job is to connect you to the right people. And we, we do that. We do it very well. So just call, come in, email, whatever it is. We will connect you to the right people who will have the answer and hopefully be able to help you. In terms of what Aaron and Emmett were talking about, uh, San Jose, two thirds of our water comes from San Jose Water Company. They've applied for a 21% rate increase. So if you use any water, that's going to suddenly get much more expensive. So there's a definite bottom line savings to you as a business owner. And with that being said, let's talk last <coughs> Thank you, Rick. Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, what a fantastic uh, event. Uh, very, very nice of the a mayor to put this together. Just. Uh, Again, shows how much you know the city really cares for the community. So my name is Ken Bender. Um, just everyone knows 911 in case of an emergency. I don't know if you have the non-emergency number. Uh, I did put it up there. Um, really, if you're ever in a situation where you need to get a hold of us, you can call 911 even if it's not an emergency. It, both of those numbers actually goes to our same dispatch center up on the hill. Um, and you just tell them it's not an emergency, they'll reroute it uh, to the proper line. Uh, also, uh, maybe many of you have known, you can call 911 on a cell phone now. Uh, it used to be where if you dialed 911, it would go over to CHP up in Redwood City or sometimes down south, and there would be like a time delay. But uh, really, the infrastructure has improved here in Cupertino as well as uh, just the West, West Valley as well in general. And so, most of the time, I'm not going to guarantee 100%, but most of the time it will go straight up to our county communications. They'll, uh, they'll put you right in contact with the sheriff's office and we can respond a little bit quick, quicker. Uh, so with my time this morning, I just want to briefly talk about the sheriff's office and then I'll end up with some, some very general tips. I know we have a, a wide variety of businesses and professions in here, so I'll try to wasn't sure exactly what, what to expect, so I, I threw some, uh, some things in there for you. But anyways, uh, again, my name is Ken Bender. I am the chief of police for Cupertino, and uh, I just wanna, again, commend the mayor and the city council, because they really do place a high priority on public safety, and uh, we just have so much support from them. And the sheriff's office, uh, we love doing police work. We're really good at it, and we love doing it in Cupertino as well. And I just took over this position earlier this year. I've been with the Sheriff's Office for 14 years. Uh, I spent about half of that time in our Detective Bureau. Um, I worked homicide for four years. I worked sexual assaults before that. That's kind of where I learned uh, how to be a detective and, and extract confessions and stuff like that. Uh, I didn't have to resort to waterboarding or anything like that. Um, but uh, before that, I worked patrol as well. I did work over in, uh, here in Cupertino, so I became familiar with the community uh, back when I was a young deputy. Um, really enjoyed it. I was a field training officer, uh, was on our SWAT team and a couple other things. But, uh, and then finally, I did spend a couple years at our uh, Sheriff's Academy as well. We actually, tr the Sheriff's Office trains not only our people, but a lot of the local agencies within Silicon Valley. Uh, we train uh, agencies all over the place. They 
they, they send their people to us, we train them, and then we send them back ready to go. So a little bit about the sheriff's office. We've been around for quite a while. We're actually the largest law enforcement agency in this county. Uh, we have over 1,400 sworn now. That number doubled actually a couple of years ago uh, when we uh, took over uh, administration of our jails. For a while it was bifurcated. We had a Department of Correction and a Sheriff's Office that actually did law enforcement uh, services out in the field. So we have about 14, a little bit over 1,400. About half of that is field enforcement, detectives, and uh, civil uh, matters. And we have several contracts, obviously, uh, the city of Cupertino is one of them. Um, we have contracts with the courts, with parks, with VTA. Um, I'm sure many people in here have seen the Valley Transportation Authority Sheriff's cars. And if you were like me, before I got on with the Sheriff's Office, I used to think, what are they? Are they cops? Can they pull me over and give me a ticket? Uh, what do they do? So uh, just to let you know, that's one of our contracts. Uh, they are full peace officers. They do everything uh, a deputy sheriff does, but that particular contract, uh, they work with the light rail and the buses, and they actually do police services for, for those types of needs. So one of the things about being such a large agency is that we have a lot of specialized units, and this ensures that we are able to respond to anything and everything that could possibly happen. And the thing to remember is that these are the resources that are available to you as residents of Cupertino um, by way of us doing uh, police work here. So our specialized units, they actually receive specialized training and then they get the equipment that comes with it. And that's really uh, training plus equipment plus a lot of practice. It really makes them experts at what they do. And I've actually listed some of our, our things. We've got a SWAT team, Special Weapons and Tactics. Um, they are, they go to the calls when patrol goes out to a scene and says, hey, you know, this is a little bit beyond our capabilities. We have a 40 person plus SWAT team. We were actually the first department in California and really one of the leaders in that we bring, we have several doctors assigned to the unit as well. So they'll actually come out with us and if there's any medical issues, whether from the public or from one of our tactical operators, um, they're there. We have uh, doctors from Stanford, Valley Medical Center, some of really some great top-notch surgeons. Um, we have uh, detectives, we have se several different uh, specialties within the detective bureau so that uh, no matter what kind of uh, case it is, we will we'll be able to handle it appropriately. We do have several task forces as well. A safe task force really focuses on the safety of our children and uh, going after child predators. Uh, we have a narcotics task force. We have a react task force, and they particularly specialize in um, electronic crimes, anything, you know, internet, computer, software, that type, those types of, uh, of crimes as well. We have a search and rescue team, a dive team. Uh, they've gotten some attention recently in the Sierra Lamar case. They've been going through all the uh, waters. Uh, in their search. Uh, hostage negotiators. How many knew that we had hostage negotiators? Uh, again, our attempt, <laughs> it's our attempt to uh, reduce volatile situations and try to have them in peacefully, so uh, without violence when possible. We have canine units, crowd control, uh, air support unit. You might have heard our helicopter flying around. Um, we're not spying. We actually, uh, we, it's actually a really good resource that our deputies are able to use. Uh, not only do we do it if we're obviously looking for someone, it helps uh, to have overhead eyes, but we use it in missing persons cases uh, and those types of situations. People um, in large areas, it helps us really cover a lot of territory. We have motorcycle units. We have both an off-road team that goes out, and I'm going to show some pictures here in a minute. Uh, that can go out in the more rural parts of the county. And then we have uh, traffic enforcement as well. Uh, within the city of Cupertino, we have several um, uh, motorcycles and, and their specialty is uh, responding to accidents and uh, ish, you know, doing enforcement in terms of traffic area related. Uh, school resources as well. And we have uh, two school resources officers within the city of Cupertino. Our office for the West Valley subdivision 
is uh, over on De Anza Boulevard. It's 1601 South De Anza. Just three, four, five minute drive right up the street if you ever need anything. Uh, we're a 24 seven operation, but our substation hours are basically, uh, you know, we, during the week working hours. That's when we have it, uh, the front staffed, but you can always get hold of us either through 911 or through our non-emergency number. I'll just show you some briefly some quick pictures of our, some of our specialized units. That's uh, one of two boats we have. Our search and rescue team is phenomenal. They're, uh, they're actually volunteers that we work uh, directly with. And they come out for a lot of, for a lot of events. Our, our CSI unit specializes in uh, processing homicide scenes and other serious crimes. Uh, it's our SWAT team. We do have a couple armored vehicles. So, so we're, a, we're a large unit, we have a lot of capabilities, but here's the thing I want you to remember. If you forget everything else that you heard that I spoke about today, it's this community-oriented policing. We are here for you. Uh, if there's an issue, part of community-oriented policing is the police working with businesses and the community to solve problems. Uh, if we don't know that a problem exists, that's where you come into play. You gotta communicate with us. Uh, let us know what the issues are. We'll brainstorm. We'll, we'll try to uh, come up and help solve the issue. I love the picture there on the left, the Norman Rockwell poster of uh, the big, strong police officer talking uh, to the little kid. And really, we do have a, a community-oriented policing philosophy uh, with the sheriff's office in here in Cupertino. So we are available to you. We want you to know. If you're afraid that maybe it's not, doesn't rise to the element of contacting the sheriff's office and you're not sure, it doesn't hurt to make a phone, quick phone call. We can have a deputy come out and talk to you. Uh, and that's what we're here for, we don't mind. I'm gonna just conclude with a couple of uh, very general uh, tips for, uh, with regards to, for those of you that have businesses, uh, robbery prevention tips. Uh, keep your businesses well lit, both inside and out. Uh, camera surveillance is really nice if something does happen. Make sure you know how to actually uh, record the footage onto a DVD and then give it to the deputy so that we can go after whoever did it. Uh, alarms are important, uh, perimeter and panic alarms. Uh, don't keep e excess money laying around, put them in the safe as uh, quickly as possible. Have two employees open and close if you're able to do that. Really the morning and the evening hours at opening and closing are some of the really Dangerous, more dangerous times that you have to be aware of. Uh, Very times and routes to the uh, to the bank. Uh, also, uh, regard regarding loss prevention strategies, you really need to focus on your internal theft. Your employees, who are they? Do you trust them? Everyone wants to trust them. I'm not here to make you not trust your employees, but the statistics clearly, clearly prove that. Most, the greatest source of loss for small businesses and medium-sized businesses are internal theft. So make sure you just, uh, I know I'm, I'm out of time, so make sure that you, I've got some uh, statistics that prove it. These are some of the areas. Make sure you know your employees, you set up policies in place, you uh, vary the responsibilities for those that are handling cash, that you do uh, audits regularly, and that you just pay attention to what's going on. Also, uh, leadership from the top, make sure you um, model ethics uh, because uh, what your employees see you do, they, they, will, uh, they will hopefully follow in fashion. Don't give people second chances. Uh, if, you catch them doing, if you catch anyone with employee theft, get rid of them, don't give them a second chance. It sends a message to the other employees that it's not tolerated. And call us, we'd be happy to come out and, uh, and take care as well. So we are, in conclusion, we are your uh, law enforcement uh, sheriff's office. So if you have any questions, I'll be around. Uh, feel free to hit me up. Ken, real quick, um, yes. two questions specifically to small businesses I've heard a lot is the first is the business next door, people that shouldn't be are always taking up my parking spots and who do I call? Mm -hmm. And the second uh, concern I heard was somebody had some people breaking into cars in their parking lot and stealing laptops and things, but they were actually concerned about calling the sheriff. Uh, they come from another uh, culture where it's you, you just don't call the sheriff. And so I wonder if you could address those two questions. Absolutely, and I'll address the second one first. The uh, 
like I said, the community-oriented policing uh, philosophy, uh, we really are here to help. We've actually, uh, some of the laptops or some of the iPads, uh, they have tracking capabilities. We've actually recovered several of those earlier this year. Uh, because people did call us, uh, deputies responded out. Uh, same with phones, uh, some, of the, some of the iPhones as well. So just we really want to emphasize that we are here for you. Uh, if, if you're the victim of a crime or you know someone that's a victim of a crime, really talk, talk to them to uh, let them know that it's okay to call us. That, that's what we're here for, and that's what we want to do. That's why we were really careful in the hiring process, uh, the sheriff's office. We hire people. We have a, a particular culture within the sheriff's office. Uh, and we're looking for a specific, uh, really a specific all-around type of person that can really work with the public and that doesn't come off in such a way that it uh, prevents people calling the police. We want you to call us. So. Uh, in regards to the, uh, the first issue with the parking issue, uh, you know, uh, that is something that we, you can definitely call and we can talk about, but, you know, it may be a, something where we need to mediate uh, between the sheriff's office and the, and the, uh, biz, the two businesses. It may be something where we could uh, uh, mark the stalls. Um, you know, if there's signage, if we can put, the city can put signage up, then we can obviously take enforcement action for, in regards to towing uh, when the signs indicate such. But um, yes, Dennis. I came to the office a couple of blocks away from here at 7.15 in the morning, and there was, there was a gentleman taking shredded stuff out of the garbage and putting them in his truck. Privacy issue is very, very important. There was, I don't know if any of you saw the Catch Me If You Can guy at the Flint Center, um, but he was saying, get a hold of the shredders that are diamond-cut shredders. But I think the dentist office called your office to, and I got the license plate number of the truck mm -hmm. that the guy was taking stuff out of the garbage in, and these were bags of shredded things. So everyone needs to be aware that there are people coming into our town that are stealing those things to get identification theft. Are we supposed to call you? Absolutely. And uh, there is an ordinance uh, that Cupertino has for people taking items out of, uh, you know, recyclables and that sort of thing. And we can, uh, it's a misdemeanor. We, we can and do take action when we get called on that. Rick, do you want me to um, continue to ask questions? Hi, I just had a quick question. Does the sheriff's office ever make visits to the schools? Because in general, kids a lot of times are afraid of the police officer and so forth and so on. And you show that great picture up there of a police officer talking to kids. I thought it would be great if they, you know, do they have the time or can the school call, if they call the sheriff's office, could that be arranged? Great, great question. I'm glad you asked it. Uh, the city of Cupertino uh, provides for two community uh, or school resource officers. We call them SROs. And they actually dress down in plain clothes and they get in there and they really interact with the kids. Uh, they build relationships. They kind of take away that stigma of calling the police and, uh, and they work to solve problems. And then we actually have another uniformed uh, deputy as well that when it comes to enforcement activities, we'll call in someone separate to take the enforcement activity so that those uh, relationships with our SROs are still there and yet they're not skirting their responsibilities as well. They go down into the middle schools as well, yes. And I also know, uh, speaking from experience, they will also send them into the elementary schools. Mm -hmm. I know I've done presentations with them as well. So if there is, a, if there is an interest by any school, any group for that matter, I, I don't know that the sheriff's office has ever declined. Right. And so you may have noticed we've let Ken go long. Uh, he's armed. <laughs> <laughs> what can I say? Um, but we, uh, what, uh, last question, what's the most common crime we have here in Cupertino? Yes, uh, Cupertino is a very safe city, uh, by the way. Uh, one of the reasons we love uh, doing police work is we feel like we're being effective here. Uh, it tends to be usually the property crimes, vehicle burglaries. Uh, and again, we try to educate people, don't leave your stuff out on the back seat where crooks can just see it when they walk by. You know, make sure you keep those things in the trunk, uh, areas out of view. Even underneath the seat, we don't like that because crooks look under there. They know people just throw stuff right under the seat. 
and uh, you know alarms on your cars, and it's obviously very uh, a crime that could happen very quickly. Great. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, last, lastly, uh, if you could follow up with Ken afterwards, uh, we've broken our own law of not having questions, but that's what Ken does. Um, the most common problem we've had is people not reporting crimes. And, and we've had some very specific instances where local business owners, local merchants, will have an alarm go off. They'll send their wife in. It actually is a burglar. Uh, it doesn't get reported. And so meanwhile, surrounding businesses are also hit. We don't know anything about it until it's all over. So when in doubt, just call. If there's any question whatsoever, just call. And I think, if anything, that's the theme we keep hearing over and over again. Great. Uh, Pat, why don't you come up? Yeah. I'm Pat Richards, and I'm with NOVA. So I'm just going to tell you a little bit about what NOVA is. NOVA is a federally funded career center, and I'm located in Sunnyvale by the Sunnyvale Town Hall by the library. We cover a seven city area. NOVA stands for North Valley and Cupertino is one of our cities. What we do is, since it's a resource center, I spend a lot of my time as a business liaison doing outreach to companies for staffing, training, resource, and layoff needs. So a lot of the people that are being impacted in Silicon Valley are coming to our resource center where we're no cost. It's your tax dollars at work. So we've got a pool of about 3,000 people that are currently job seekers right now. So it's a real benefit for companies such as yourself that are just starting out or wanting to hire people. You could be hiring someone on a short-term three-month project, maybe an IT project. You could be wanting to hire somebody on a contract basis for a couple of months. You could be wanting to hire somebody for regular full-time employment. It doesn't matter to us. We have a youth group. You could hire someone for the summer, 16 to 24-year-olds as well. So a lot of you might even have children that are, might be home from college looking for employment. They can come down, take a workshop, and learn how to look for work. So again, we have a lot of adults, though, that are looking for work as well. There's a lot of different arrangements we can make. We have uh, veterans that we're working for. If you're wanting to hire a vet, we have a vet program we work with. I've already mentioned the youth program you could take advantage of. Maybe right now you're just concentrating on getting your business started. That's great, but keep this in mind maybe in the fall or maybe next year or next summer when you're ready to hire, you can definitely contact us. I have brought uh, different flyers. They're on the resource table in the back of the room over there as well. Um, maybe some of you aren't sure how to even write a job description. That's not a problem. We have that information on the novaworks.org website as well. You can give us a phone call. We can walk you through on how to write that job description. You can send it to us. We'll give you some feedback on it. We will post your job description on our website. So besides having access to the um, members that we have, you also could have um, access to other people looking at our website as well. We also have a program that if you're interested and in, could possibly offer some training, we have what we call is an on-the-job training, where with NOVA funds, we could help subsidize part of the training during, say, it's a six-month training. So for example, you might want to hire somebody as a receptionist or you might hire office help, and maybe they need to learn Excel. If you provide some Excel training, then we could perhaps work with you on subsidizing for six months while the training's going on that person's um, salary as well. So lots of benefits for working with us. Um, and again, if you know anybody who's looking for work, you can refer them to NOVA in Sunnyvale as well. Uh, we have lots of programs. We offer the job search assistance, such as writing a resume, seeing a drop-in career advisor, doing assessments, the interviewing, even how to do salary negotiations. And we're really big on networking and LinkedIn. If you're not on LinkedIn as a job seeker, you probably want to be on LinkedIn. We have workshops on that as well. So again, we are a no-cost staffing solution. Please keep us in mind, and we're very much looking forward to working with you. I'm Pat Richards. You can contact me directly at NOVA, or you can pick up one of the flyers in the back. We can work with you as well. I have a team that is very interested in supporting businesses that are getting started. Thank you.
Um, well, my number, it's I'm Pat Richards, 408-730-7847. And again, it's just Nova is our website's very good too. Thanks. I, um, I, I just have two quick questions. Uh -huh. um, uh, the first is just out of curiosity, what's your funding source? Um, we're federally funded tax dollars at work. Okay, great. And, and then for staffing, um, are, are the employers required to take your recommendations for staff, or is there an interview process that's involved with respect to hiring someone that you, you recommend or provide? What you can do is we can work with you different ways. It's up to you to how you want to interview, how you want the resume sent to you. But again, you can tell us um, how you want the resume sent to you, and then it's up to you to decide what the interviewing process would be and who you hire. Okay, good. So it's not mandatory or anything? No, but... no, no, no. We cannot dictate to you who you hire. Right. We're Thank just you. a resource of the candidate pool. There's, are you stretching, Mahesh? Yes. Uh, oh, okay. Well, I'm walking over there. Uh, we had some late arrivals, uh, notably former mayor and current council member Gilbert Wong. And uh, we had a business owner come in late. If you could, we did some introductions. Yeah, they're all pointing at you. <laughs> well, um, my name is uh, Annie Lee. I'm from Lee Sandwiches. It's just a couple minutes from here. And because uh, we just talked about um, burglary, and it just happened to my store last Tuesday, so I just want to share with all of you. Uh, they come in with the two guys, wear the white hat, white clothes, and white glove, everything, and they use the crowbar and to break in my back door and come in. Within 38 seconds, they get it out, and the cop come in in one minute. So that's just, I just want to share with you the incident, so be careful at your place. Thank you for your patience, Mahesh. I just quickly want to say that uh, we have in the past used services from NOVA, from PAT. Uh, we've had some summer uh, uh, students from De Anza who came and uh, did some work with us and everything. And it was very good. Yeah, thanks. And that was an unpaid commercial. <laughs> so next is John Zarelli, uh, President of the Chamber of Commerce and General Manager of Recology. Is that correct? That is correct. As of today, it was correct. Okay. <laughs> uh, thank you, Rick. Uh, my name is John Zarelli. I'm the president of the Cupertino Chamber of Commerce. And as Mayor Santoro said, you know, we put together uh, this event in partnership with the city of Cupertino to focus on small businesses. Um, as we get through the day, you know, what are we doing right? Uh, what could we uh, be doing more for you? Um, I don't think we're doing anything wrong, but uh, maybe we can do it better. So, uh, first of all, I'd like to thank uh, our board of directors who are, uh, took time out of their busy day today to participate in the workshop here. Uh, Vicki Sai is here. Darcy Paul is on our uh, board of directors. Kevin McClellan. Uh, who else is here? I'm missing. Uh, Mahesh Nealanis. Um We also have our great staff, Mark Matsumoto. I think Alice was here. Or she's still here. Um, we also have our ambassadors who do a tremendous job for us. Uh, Janice from Bitter and Sweet. Um, who else am I missing here? Oh, Mark, or Mark Sargent, or our ambassador. Am I missing anybody else? So, and the Chamber of Commerce is, uh, we're a volunteer board of 20 people, uh, 20 members, and our job is to do what we can to promote business in Cupertino from large, medium, and small business. We have over 200 plus members uh, who belong to us. And like I said, we, it's a networking. Um, it's what we can do for you. And we have a little slide uh, presentation here. You know, what are the benefits? What will the chamber do to help my business? Uh, invest in your local chamber. And like I said, we have over you know, 200 members. Um, some examples, what we, you know, there's always changes coming up in the community. Uh, what can the chamber uh, help to do that? A good example is, uh, plastic bag ban. City of San Jose uh, adopted plastic bag ban a couple months ago. Uh, City of Cupertino is looking at, at that right now. And from a chamber standpoint, what can we do if you're a small, medium, or large business to help you along with that? Um, benefits, uh, it's a great marketing and business thing. Uh, we have monthly mixers. Uh, this, a week from this Wednesday, July 11th, we're having an open house uh, at our chamber office on Silverado. 
It's going to be a great event. Uh, all the board members are volunteering. It's a luau theme. So I encourage you to come uh, see the chamber office, uh, do some great networking. Uh, we have some great events. Uh, our annual Diwali Festival is in October. Our annual New Year uh, Luncheon is in February. We have our annual Star Awards where we recognize small, medium, and large business of the year in addition to citizens of the year. Uh, we also have our State of the City. Uh, that's always in January. Uh, Mayor Santoro did a great job uh, this January and our focus, as we said, uh, small businesses. Uh, we have com committees, councils, and uh, uh, what's that? Uh, monthly meetings. Uh, first Friday of every month is our LAC, which is our Les Legislation Action Committee, and that we focus on what's uh, what legislation is going on in the state and the local, and we pass it on to our local members. We also have our AABC, uh, Asian American Business Council, and we have our Connect Clubs and also our Chamber Ambassadors. And through all this is to promote your business. And to give you some examples, we also do, uh, we also have a taste of Cupertino. We just had that a couple of weeks ago. You know, part of it is, you know, what we do to help your business. We also have to like a little social. We do those twice a year and we have 10 to 12 restaurants in Cupertino. We do a Valcom Mall. We usually have 200, 250 people and uh, a couple of the wineries come and serve wine. So we do a little social on that too. Um, we'll also do our quarterly coffees. And part of our quarterly coffees is to promote um, what's going on that can help your business. Um, a good example is we got PG&E in November is changing its baseline usage and how you're charged. So there'll be one of our next upcoming quarterly coffees on uh, what you can do for your business to cut down your PG&E usage. Go to the next one. And you know what's the cost of uh, you know, belonging to the chamber. Uh, it's very minimal. It's 375 uh, for employees uh, 1 to 10. Um, well, the benefits, we have monthly mixers. Uh, we have anywhere from 50 to 75 to 100 people. Depending on the venue, uh, you'll, make, you'll make great connections uh, for your business there. Uh, weekly participation in the Connect Club. Uh, we have our monthly ambassadors meeting and other network and uh, marketing events. And just in closing, I mean, we have 200 plus members. Uh, like I said, out of the 200, probably 60 to 70 percent are small businesses, and that's what we're here today. Is you know, what can what can we do for you? What the city can do for you, and uh, what can we do better? So thank you. Great. Thank you, John. I, I wanted to also flag just really quickly that um, obviously we're a little bit over, but I think it really speaks to the eagerness of all of these organizations to support you. Um, and we want to make sure that all of these materials are available to you after the event. So I've heard a couple people ask questions about where do I get your contact information or um, someone asked me earlier, will the presentations be available online? So I would say by the end of the week, we'll make sure that all of the presentations are available and then also the flyers, um, if I can get those electronically from folks if I don't have them now. We'll put them all on a page for you, and the beauty of Eventbrite is that we can track down your email address as long as you provided it, and then send the materials out to you, a link to the website, so that'll be available by the end of the week. Great. And as Erin uh, mentioned, we are a little over time, so to respect everybody's um, schedules, I'm going to move things up a little bit, and let's just cut right to lunch. Uh, if you have questions... Uh, with the permission of the presenters, give everybody free license to follow up with them uh, during lunch. And then certainly one of our takeaways is to find out what your questions are. So we'll be trying to glean those as best as we can. And the best way for us to do that is for you to have lunch and not leave. And that's when we do, that's when we close the loop. We get the second part of the equation where you're asking your questions, you're sharing your concerns, frustration, whatever it may be, we need to know what that is to see what we can do to address, address your concerns. Uh, when the mayor first started talking about this last year, uh, it was interesting that the topic really was 
the vitality of, of our community. It wasn't whether or not your business pays property or sales tax. Yeah, the fact is, the Coop, Cupertino benefits if we have thriving businesses in our community, period.